I first found out about Mothman in late middle school while taking the semester performance test known as the West Test, which no longer even exists. They got rid of it in favor of some similar tests on computers with a different name. One of the English questions involved reading an article about the Scarberry and Mallet Mothman sighting, then answering questions. It even featured a photo of Bob Roach's Mothman statue. Growing up in West Virginia as a fan of horror movies and monsters, I was amazed that something like this had been said to happen in my state. I was excited that we had our own mascot, our own monster, and that the design was so cool. There is something to be said about flying creatures. A certain primal fear of airborne predators has been evolved with the human brain. I remember turning to the other students in the room after the test was finished and asking something along the lines of, Isn't that Mothman thing interesting? To which they all seemed to reply, Whatever, or, Oh, that thing? Yeah, I've seen that before. They didn't seem to care about it as much as I did. I found a new thing to be fascinated by, a new thing to represent West Virginia. But before long, I fell back into my usual obsessions, such as movies, video games, and so on. I had the idea of Mothman in my head, but I didn't focus on it much until early high school, when I went down to the school library and happened to find a bunch of books about the Mothman. These included books like Jeff Wamsley's Behind the Red Eyes and Truth Behind the Legend, as well as Mothman and Other Curious Encounters by Lauren Coleman. I checked out the book and read them in class and wrote about them in my journals. I drew tons of pictures of the Mothman and my new obsession was born. It wasn't long until I began annoying the other students in the classroom with it, trying to start a conversation about the creature or just telling them about what I've read. That's when my friend Brandon told me his story about witnessing the Mothman. I took interest in it and wrote it down immediately in my journal, asking him questions and quoting him directly. After asking all the people in the classroom if they'd seen the Mothman, Brandon seemed to be the only one. The students just as before didn't want to talk about it. No one seemed to care about the Mothman but me. After completely reading the library books I checked out, writing about the Mothman in my journal a ton, and drawing the creature over and over, I once again moved on to my other obsessions. I'd probably only occasionally bring him up when it was necessary, or talk about it when it was mentioned. It wasn't until senior year of high school that I truly returned to the Mothman. Just as the day fully turned into night, February 9th, the power went out, pitch black. It was a cold, snowy night. No television, no internet, no light, nothing. I went through the house and got a flashlight. For hours, I sit there in the dark, moving my flashlight along the walls and waiting for the power to come back on. In that time, the idea of the Mothman suddenly returned to me in the form of a gripping primal fear. After hearing noises from outside and through the house, which really just amount to nothing, I felt paranoia, anxiety, hysteria, and generally felt as if I was being tortured as I waited for the lights to come back on. When the lights eventually did come back on, I couldn't stop thinking with the Mothman and couldn't shake the weird feeling. There was no school that day or the next. It was canceled due to the snow. I began looking up stuff about Mothman on the internet. I remember feeling weird all night. I felt as if I was in a trance, probably due to sleep deprivation. I found stuff about him on Wikia as individual pages, but not a whole wiki. Later that night, when it was finally time to go to sleep, I had various dreams or nightmares about the Mothman as I drifted in and out of consciousness. I'd see wings, red eyes, shadows, and silhouettes as I lay trying to go to sleep. I'd constantly be in a strange state between awake and asleep. My dreams are usually weird to begin with. They usually have no rhyme or reason and just involve random concepts, scenes, and colors. Adding the concept of a flying creature didn't help, and I couldn't think of anything else. Finally, the thing that ended my strange Mothman dreams was the revelation that I had at the end of my dream as I woke up. I saw a web page with black backgrounds and white text, and my own voice as an inner thought I heard, the Mothman wiki. I'm not saying this means anything more than an idea coming to me in a dream. People in Point Pleasant during the sightings in 1966 through 1967 had dreams about the Mothman too. That really could just mean nothing more than they were afraid and thinking about it. I understand that dreams are fictional and just a delusion of the mind. It's like how the author Mary Shelley came up with Frankenstein in a dream. They allow the mind to think and come up with ideas. In the morning, I thought it over. I wasn't sure if I should create the Mothman wiki, if there was enough information, and if I really wanted to associate myself with a thing plaguing my dreams at night, and spend more time obsessing on it. The answer, of course, is yes. I created the Mothman wiki on February 10th, 2016, and worked on it all day. I was concerned at first people would think I actually believed in the Mothman, so I tried to make it clear that I view it as interesting folklore and not as fact, while still remaining impartial in writing articles. I once again annoyed people by steering every conversation to being about Mothman and talking about it non-stop. Constantly drawn on whiteboards in class, and even printed out flyers advertising the Mothman wiki, and placed them around the school, sticking to the lockers and such. They took them all down within the day. The library got new books in about the Mothman. I checked them all out, including the old ones I'd previously read. Then finally, on April 3rd, 2016, I went to the Mothman Museum in Point Pleasant and bought some of the same books I've been reading, meaning that now instead of checking them out, I could own them. I wore Mothman clothing from the gift shop to school and basically turned all my art projects in class into Mothman-related. Mothman seemed to be the prompt for my life. 
The other students never did care, and I could never make them care, or relate to them in any way. They had different interests like usual, and whenever I brought it up, they'd focus on the fact that Mothman is fictional, saying things like, Mothman's not real, as if that means anything. I respond with, yeah, what's your point? Neither is Batman, and he's still awesome. A character doesn't need to be realistic to be good. I like my reality real, and my fiction, fictional. Mothman is an important part of West Virginia art and folklore, and the closest thing the culture will ever have here. He was born from paranoia and hysteria, just like the Mothman Wiki. A Wikia page with over 70 articles detailing everything about the Mothman. I use as my own personal reference point, and hopefully other people who stumble across it will do the same. Through this page I attempt to preserve the legend of the Mothman, and hopefully educate others about my favorite obsession.